Stephen O'Donnell is heading into his first full season as Pat's boss, and he has rung the changes for the new season. Alan Reynolds has had to do likewise at Waterford. So, whose new look outfit would settle quickest when they met at Richmond Park on Friday? Eight debutants in the Waterford lineup for the visit to Inchy Core on Friday, and in front of a decent crowd, the Blues almost hit the front when Michael O'Connor headed over a Kevin O'Connor cross. A big chance missed by the new Waterford captain. Football royalty in the stands as Stephen Kenny watched on on Friday as the visitors, who played a nice brand of passing football, created a second chance. Fullback Tarek Wilson got down to the byline before getting in a cross, which the home defence initially dealt with. But Wilson was persistent, and Ali Coote didn't have the necessary power or direction to beat Brendan Clark in the home goal. St. Pat's looked a little disjointed in the opening half an hour, but their best passes of play in that opening half came when the ball was played back to keeper Brendan Clark. His clearance bounced nicely to Dean Clark, who spotted the Blues keeper Brian Murphy of his line, and Clark just missed the angle with a spectacular effort. St. Pat's were in the game now and started to impose themselves on the visitors as the half wore on. Dean Clark, a late replacement for Dara Markey, who was injured in the warm-up, found Rory Feely, the former Waterford player. And as Wilson backed away, Feely put his shot over the crossbar. And it remained scoreless at half-time. Four minutes after the restart, however, Waterford scored. And in all honesty, St. Pat's only had themselves to blame. Robbie Benson never spotted Matt Smith, who nipped in behind him to get possession ahead of Clark before finding Kevin O'Connor and the Preston Loney calmly rolled the ball to the net. It was shocking from Benson, it was clever from Smith and coolness from O'Connor and Waterford won up. Stung by the concession of that sloppy goal, St. Pat's then laid siege to the Waterford goal in the remaining minutes of the second half in a search for an equaliser. A really nice flowing passing movement involving several home players. And eventually it was captain Ian Birmingham who got in around the back before passing. And Billy King just couldn't apply the finish as Brian Murphy dropped gratefully on the loose ball. King on debut, the former Scottish under-21 international. St. Pat's kept up the pressure and they were denied what looked like a penalty by referee Sean Grant when Blue's old boy Feely appeared to be taken down by defender Akinwali Odi Mayo. Grant faced plenty of protests and it looked like Odi Mayo on loan from Reading had clipped Feely in the area but no penalty was forthcoming. Robbie Benson looking to make up for his mistake that led to the concession of the goal helped launch St. Pat's next attack. King got free on the left. He left the defender on the seat of his pants in the area, but Birmingham missed an absolute sitter with a close-in header. But still they came. The Blues in rearguard mode now. A nice ball down the channel by Lee Desmond, picked out St. Pat's sub Ronan Hale, who crossed. The ball flicked off Scott Allardyce, and Murphy was forced to tip over his own crossbar. Murphy, also on debut, after spells at Bohemians, Iswich Town, Portsmouth and Cardiff City. And from the corner, Ronan Hale saw his header cleared off the line and the Blues survived. Hale put in a decent shift after being introduced as a second-half sub and kept possession well here before picking out another sub, James Duna, whose shot was blocked and then cleared by a relieved Blues defence. But it was headed straight back in again, and another sub, Chris Forrester, eventually found room to turn and shoot and bring out a flying save from the excellent Murphy. Murphy was certainly the busier of the two keepers on Friday night as Waterford fought to the nail to hang on to their precious lead. St. Pat's eventually worked out an opening for Hale, whose shot Murphy could only parry, and the assistance flag gave Waterford some relief from the consistent onslaught. 
St. Pat's could never breach Murphy all night and Waterford went on to record their third league win in a row at Richmond Park. In the end, it finished. St. Pat's Athletic nil, Waterford FC won. I felt the um, first half we probably, you know, both teams, you know, first game of the season, though it was a bit helter-skelter, we could have showed a little bit more quality in the first half and then conceded a very sloppy goal on our behalf and then as the game went on, you know, we, we missed um, some very good chances and obviously Brian Murphy has pulled off a few great saves. Fantastic win against a really good side. Um, you know, for a new squad that we have together, it was a fantastic result for us and um, we played, you know, we worked really hard without, you know, lacking a little bit of quality at time, but I couldn't fault the effort. I thought they were fantastic as a group of players. Four, two lads came in yesterday. Brian Murphy came in, I think it was Wednesday, so credit to them. It takes a little bit of pressure off us going into the next few games. You know, it's nice to get your first win out of the way. And um, as I said, a performance like that we, and the attitude of the group towards the end was, uh, was very good and hopefully we can build on it.